Hey guys, I'm excited for today's video because I'm doing a fun little ranking. This should be a shorter video and I am sure that several people have done this, but I saw it on Chic Geek's channel. I will have her video down below. And as you can tell by the title, I'm gonna be ranking the 10 oldest palettes in my collection. And this was really hard. There are so many that I really love and I feel like they're falling towards the bottom of the 10. But you know, if I was comparing these to all the palettes in my collection, I don't think that these would be at the bottom. So I have my little screenshot of my spreadsheet up here so I can tell you how old these are. And the oldest one is from July of 2017. So let's start with number 10, which is my least favorite out of these. I got this one in January of 2019. And that would be the Urban Decay Naked Cherry Palette. I do think that the formula in this one is really nice. I feel like after Naked Heat, the formula got much better, at least with the mattes. I think this shade is very stupid. It's like a weird, like mummy <laughs> type of color is what I think of it like, like a literal like Halloween mummy. And I don't know what someone's supposed to do with it no matter what your skin tone is. I feel like on some of the deeper complexion, this would look very ashy. And then you've got this shade here, which it seems like in one of like each of their palettes, there's like some shimmery dud and it's this one. I love these mattes. I love this shimmer. The shimmer is really nice as well. It's a really pretty palette. You can't get a ton of versatility here. The only versatility you really get is because there is a peach shade. I think that this should have just been a mini palette and I know I personally would have loved it a lot more. So good quality except for this one. This shade is dumb. The rest I think are beautiful but too big, too repetitive. At number nine, we have my oldest mini palette, and this is the Natasha Denona Mini Lila, which I feel like was their first mini, if I'm not mistaken. One of the first for sure. I'm not sure if maybe Sunset came out before this one. You'll have to let me know. But this I got in September of 2018. This is so beautiful. These three shades are very special. I know that these are similar, but this is more purple, this is more red. These two are just kind of like blah. In comparison, I don't feel like the shades go together that well. And when I have a five pan where I feel like they don't all go together, for some reason I just don't reach for the whole thing. I haven't used this in a really long time, but the quality is really good. This shimmer here is very special. At number eight, we have my second oldest mini palette, and this is the Dose of Colors I Love Sarai. And I got this one July of 2019. So in here you've got some beautiful shimmers, some good mattes. And then this is like a really nice like foiled shade. This is more of like a glittery one. I have never used this one, but I do like these other shades a lot. I did take this palette with me traveling and I feel like this transition to crease color can go with all three of these. Quality is really, really good. I just don't love that last shade. And I do have these shades in other palettes. The only one that's a little bit different would be this. Same with this undertone, feels a little bit special, but great quality and I don't see myself passing it on anytime soon. Then number seven is a palette that's probably the most sentimental to me, the most special because it was a subscriber gift from my friend Christine. And I got this in July of 2017. This is the Anastasia Master Palette by Mario. And I had looked all over for this. I missed my opportunity getting it online. We went to New York and I went to several Sephora's looking for it and I, I just could never find it, but Christine sent me hers. This matte burnt orange Isabel is my favorite color in the palette. I have so many like warm mattes from Anastasia because the formula is so good, but I do feel like this one is special. The reason that this one is ranking as low as it is, first off, I don't love the undertone of this shade, but other than that, I feel like the shimmers in here are very soft, a little bit more satin, where I prefer a metallic, more foiled shimmer. And Anastasia has done that with her singles and then some of the shades in palettes that were later than this, but like earlier than like the Primrose and the Nouveau one. This is so beautiful. You guys know I love these type of shades. I am not gonna be getting rid of this one anytime soon. I don't care how old it is. I'm never gonna pass it on. This will stay in my collection forever. But yeah, I would prefer the shimmers to be a little bit more metallic. At number six would be a palette that I got in January 2019, and that is the Too Faced Ginger Bread Spice Palette. 
and I have gotten the extra spicy and then I think they came out with two more after that. I did not get those. I think out of the four of those, this one does have the best color selection. I think the one last year I liked, like the purples in there were really pretty, but to me it didn't make sense with the packaging. I feel like this one is just perfect color story wise. I loved this shimmer a lot and I think these over here are really pretty. The mattes are very nice. I think that this is a great quality palette. This shade is really pretty as well. But for some reason, I tend to reach for other things over this, but I'm so happy to have it in my collection. This is a very, very good palette from Too Faced. At number five, I have a palette that is no longer available. I got it in January, 2018, the Too Faced Just Peachy Mattes palette. And it's just a reminder that Too Faced did us wrong getting rid of the peach line, which aside from the palette, you know, all the complexion products are perfect for oily skin. And I guess they don't care about us oily skin gals and guys because they got rid of everything. But I really enjoyed this palette. You can see I used up these two shades. These were both different like primer setting shades for my skin tone, but it was really weird because one was very firmly pressed and one was very loosely pressed. So I ended up just like repressing them together and using it to set my primer. But the shades in here are really good. I'm trying to see which one of these is more of the satin. This one has a little bit of shimmer in it, but you could definitely use that like a matte. And I, of course, like mostly use these here, but I know that I was using Tarte Chrome Paint Shadow Pot and Park Avenue Princess, which is like a golden bronze on my lid. And I was using these shades for the rest of the look. And I love it. The quality of these mattes are phenomenal. Very pigmented. They blend nicely. They all go together well. And on me, I was able to tell that they were all different shades. The only reason this isn't ranking higher is because like, yeah, there's not a ton of versatility between the shades. And as much as I love mattes, I really love shimmers and I would, would prefer a palette that has at least half shimmers, if not a little bit more than that. Palette number four I got in July of 2017 and that would be the Urban Decay Naked Heat Palette. Like I said, I do think that this one has really great quality. Again, you have this weird sort of mummy shade here. I love these ones here. I think all the shimmers in here are really, really nice. You're not gonna get a ton of versatility in this palette, but that's okay. These are totally my kind of colors. I really like the way that they look on my eye color, skin tone, hair color. So this is definitely a favorite. I have definitely neglected it because I'm using newer things, but this is a good staple for me to have and I'm not gonna get rid of it anytime soon. Palette number three, I got January of 2019 and that would be the Huda Beauty New Nude Palette. I do not like most of her obsessions. The only ones that I think are really good would be the nude versions. I have all three of those and love them. The obsessions are just super inconsistent. However, I have all of her larger palettes except for the Rose Gold Remastered. I didn't like the colors in that one, but all of the big palettes perform really well. But this is the palette where she introduced having this like cream shadow base in here, like a primer shade. And I, I did not like it. It creased on me. I would have preferred just a regular shade in here. These mattes here, so pigmented blend really nicely. Very stunning. Unfortunately, there are two pressed glitters in here, which I don't love. And she did introduce this more like foiled formula in here, which I think is very pretty. There are several of them in here, but she only has one of her regular shimmers, which is actually my favorite formula. I think that this gives a ton of shine on the lid and is like really saturated with base pigment. So I was really disappointed there weren't more of this formula. And at number two, we have the Huda Beauty Desert Dusk Palette and I got this one January, 2018. So again, I love this packaging, like Huda is so gorgeous. And I love these type of colors as well. The reason this is ranking higher though is because there's only one press glitter, which I still don't love. We don't have that weird like concealer cream base. And this one has several regular shimmers, but this color and this one here are very metallic and are my favorite shimmers in the palette. I love these two mattes here. This color right here, again, I don't love that like weird undertone. It's really like the only one I don't use. I think there could be a little bit more variety from some of these lighter shimmers, but I really, really love the looks I made with this one. And then at number one, you guys will not be surprised if you've been following me for a long time. I got this palette in April of 2019. 
ColourPop Sweet Talk palette. This is just so good to me. Unfortunately, we've got two pressed glitters and this I think was the first time ColourPop ever did a pressed glitter in a palette and they have improved their formula so much since this one. And you do have a super shock in here, which I really like. There are no mattes with glitter, thank God. But for me, I tend to make a look with each of the shimmer shades. I really like these mattes on my skin tone. I am able to see a difference in the depth of all of these shades. And I love that you do have like a dark brown, but it's like a little bit of like a warmer, more like rosy or red brown, which I really like. So this one I just think is beautiful and a staple for me in the springtime and I of course love to pair this with my pastel liners from ColourPop as well. So that was a ranking of the 10 oldest palettes in my collection. Let me know what other type of ranking videos you would enjoy. I really do like watching them. I think it's a great way to talk about things that aren't just like the newest, latest, greatest things. And hopefully this will get me inspired to pull out some of these things and use them. They're all so, so beautiful. And I would love to hear your thoughts on these palettes. And I would love to know the 10 oldest palettes in your collection, if you remember. I want to thank you guys so much for watching this video. Please like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll talk to you soon. Bye, guys.